Geek TV presents Homework Hotline, the after-school show that fuses learning with fun. Watch local teachers bring the classroom on air and online. This is Homework Hotline. Hey, I'm Beth Baker and I teach math at McKinleyville Middle School in McKinleyville. And I'm Jody Hamango. I teach 7th grade science at McKinleyville Middle School. Welcome to Homework Hotline and today it's the science teacher's job to teach us a sciencey thing and I'm going to learn right along with you. So we're going to do some science with lipids which are fats, oils and waxes and we're going to use some of each to make solid lotion bars. So instead of having lotion stored in a plastic bottle that you buy at a store, you can buy simple ingredients to make your own. And then it's, they're solid and you heat them up with the heat of your body and your skin when you rub it on. So is it a little bit like a bar of soap, sort of? It's like a bar of soap, but okay. moisturizing. Only it's, only it's lotion instead. Okay. Yeah. Oh, very cool. I don't think I've ever had one of these. Well, I've had like lip balm and stuff like that. Right. Or and chapstick. It's actually, so another very similar project would be to use similar items to make lip balm. Oh, how fun. And lip balm tends to be more oily, so these we're going to add quite a bit of beeswax in order to make them very solid and a little bit more heat resistant. Uh-huh. Well, because you wouldn't really want like a chapstick consistency all over your skin necessarily. No, and it's right. hard. You, you would have to have it in some kind of a container. So this oh, is right. nice because you don't really need a container, although... Um, these candy tins, oh, I always yeah. save I love mine. Those. Yep. Um, these are awesome for storing your solid lotion bars. Oh, so very nice. It's always save these. Lots of crafty people like to have these around to store things and uh -huh. use them with frequency. And then did you eat all those Altoids? Oh, of course. Oh. And I ate a large portion of them today <laughs> in order to have this Altoid tin ready for the show. I'm sure your breath is wonderful inside that mask. And I'm um, incredibly, <laughs> you know, the sacrifices I make <laughs> in the name of science. Okay, well I'm excited to learn how to do this today. Yeah, it's fun and it's super duper easy. The ingredients, at least locally, are pretty easy to find. Mm -hmm. I buy most of mine, there's an herb store in town, so I buy mine at the herb store. And so most towns probably have those things. And we'll go over our ingredients here in a second so that we can talk about what we have. Okay. But before we get started on any science project, we always like to talk about the hazards. So this would be a project you could do in your kitchen. You're gonna, we're gonna do some double boiling of materials. So the main safety consideration, it's the, this is all good stuff to have for on your skin, so we don't have to worry about that, but the main safety consideration is to make sure that you use caution around heat. And this will be extreme heat and we're going to melt everything together, so we're going to have basically molten liquids. So you got to be careful of that. I still have a scar on my forearm. It's faded now, but when I was a kid, I lifted up a boiling water pan lid and I tipped it so that all the steam funneled straight onto my forearm. And to this day, I have a scar from the burn I gave myself. And my mom had told me a jillion times when you pick up the lid, tip it away from you so the steam goes out away. Right. And I just forgot. Well, and steam and burns are worse than like a hot water burn. Yeah, so to this day I have a little mark on my yeah. forearm. From so that there's one. actually much yes. more energy colliding with your skin from the steam than oh, yeah. hot water. But so we're even gonna talk about like the safe way to take the top off of our boiling water. You might be able to see there's steam coming up right here because this is all full of boiling water right now. Right. So, so we're even gonna talk about the safe way to take the lid off. Yeah, so we got this all heated and ready to go before the show. So here's our materials list, and you can, some of the, a lot of this stuff you would have laying around. So you need a large pot that's here on the stove. You need to put water in it, and you heat up the water. Then you need some measuring tools, and this is kind of cool because you need, if you look at the lipids, you need one part each of fat, oil, and wax. So depending on how big of a batch you want to make, you can actually use just about any 
cup or measuring cup. As long as you use it all three times. Right. And you could start with maybe a very small batch while you were figuring it out. Yeah, and we're uh -huh. going to do a really small batch today, okay. partly because I just don't have a ton of beeswax. Uh -huh. And beeswax is the wax that we're going to use, and waxes in nature help either seal in or repel moisture. And humans get wax in their ears for that exact reason. And sometimes you get too much wax in your ears. So even humans have wax in them. Your body makes wax. Right. And birds make wax to basically water, make their feathers water resistant. So it's a, you know, waxes are made in animals and plants. Plant, some plants have waxy leaves to help them shed water or seal moisture in. Mm -hmm. um, you need some kind of a stir stick. And it can be kind of hard to clean all this up because we're going to melt all these oils and fats and waxes together. Mm -hmm. So something that you're willing to either really scrub or something that you're willing to throw away or something that you're willing to leave dedicated to projects just like this. And then you need a mold. It says mold, not fungus, but one of these, the handy dandy heart mold, which I use for all the projects. <laughs> and this is actually a great shape for making things that you're gonna hold in your hand. It's a really organic shape. You wanna have something not with little tiny edges that will, cause they'll break off. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to get it out of the mold. Yeah, yeah, and when you're handling it, warming it up in your hand to use it as a lotion bar, the little edges can be kind of uh -huh. Delicate. And is this a silicone mold? Is that what that is? This is a silicone mold. And I think mold. a lot of crafters use this, whether you're making um, candies or fancy baking or soap or whatever. So I think a lot of people use these molds because they release easily too. Yeah. And so you can get your stuff out again. And I sometimes spray coconut oil in it just to, mm. but you definitely don't need that. Okay. And I didn't bring any for us today. So that'll be okay. And then you have the option of adding fragrance. The ingredients that we're going to use today are all plant-based except the beeswax and they all have their own nice very pleasant scent so you don't necessarily need to add fragrance but essential oils and make sure you know if you add essential oils you should do the research and make sure it's skin safe oh, and right. pet so safe. For example cinnamon oil is can actually burn your skin right so you need to just pay attention cinnamon and peppermint things like that. And some are super gentle to use on the skin. This is lavender. Mm -hmm. These can be found at discount stores, but one of my tips is to go ahead and read the box or read the side. And if you can, get therapeutic grade. Oh, That's just a higher grade of oil. So okay. I like to have the higher grade of oil, especially if I'm putting it on my skin. One of our largest organs. So I like to take good care of my skin. So ready to dive in? Yes. All right. So maybe we should look at our fats, oils, and waxes. Um, we have four fats. We have cocoa butter. Okay. And the cocoa butter, this is from the cocoa tree. It's high in antioxidants. It can clog pores. So if you wanted to use this, like you wouldn't want to put this probably on your face. It's an extract from seeds, and be seeds or beans from okay. the tree. And it's found in South and Central America, but cultivated in parts of Africa. So we can put some of that in. It's got a shelf life of about five years, very pleasant kind of chocolatey smell. And so are we gonna do equal parts of that in the little measuring cup? Yes. Okay. And then I also brought shea <laughs> I'm butter. I'm ready to get started. I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's do something. Shea butter, which is another fat. Shea butter has a slightly um, shorter shelf life. It can be protective for your skin from UV light. So kind of a natural sunscreen. And I see shea butter listed as an ingredient in a lot of different lotions and, yeah. and stuff. Good yeah. for skin repair, rich in omega-3 fatty acids, vitamins A and E, all those things are really good for your skin. And it's made from nuts of the shea tree. So it's found in Central and West Africa and it's got a slightly shorter shelf life. It's okay to still use it on your skin. You just won't have all those amazing phytonutrients if okay. you keep it for a long time. And then I brought olive oil for our oil. So an oil is a lipid that's liquid at room temperature. Okay. And I infuse this with calendula. So one of my favorite garden plants, really useful. It's an edible flower, really good for skin. We can dye stuff with it, which uh -huh. we did last time. Oh, we yeah. were here. We made beautiful yellow uh, fabric dye last time. Right, and yeah. it's edible, it's anti-inflammatory, it's antimicrobial, it's antifungal. Wow. It's good for rashes, stings, bites, 
dry skin, burns, eczema, cold sores. So lots of good <laughs> stuff. Miss Hamango does not get any sort of a kickback from the calendula industry, just in case you're wondering. But if somebody wants okay. me to, yeah. So if I the calendula object. industry wants to sponsor a science teacher, this would be the one. Send me seeds. Yes. <laughs> I'll plant them and then use them. So we can get totally get started. Okay, can I take the top off? Yes. Now? Okay, so we're gonna do this correctly. I'm gonna get the steam away from my body as and I I'm just it up. gonna step back. I'm gonna let the steam out. Ooh, that's a lot of steam. Yes. And I have my hand in the oven mitt and I'm letting the steam go away from my body. And then I'm just gonna set this back here. And I think it's so hot at this point. I Should think we, we just could, turn it off altogether? Yeah, we could turn it yeah. off. If we okay. need it, we can always turn it back on. So, so this water is quite bubbly boily. And you don't want to introduce a ton of moisture into your lotion bars. So that is kind of good to let maybe some of this steam mm -hmm. dissipate. I like to use this handy dandy Pyrex because once everything's mixed, it also has a pore spout. So it's really easy to transfer the mm. liquid into the mold really neatly. Okay. And everything's in a ratio of about a third. So I'm gonna give you stuff to and it was fats, lipids, and oils? Fats, lipids, and oils. Okay. I'm going to make sure. You want the warm water to come part way up whatever your inside container is. Mm -hmm. um, not so much that it'll float, but enough that it'll heat the ingredients on the inside. I like to start with the oil. Right. So there's nothing in here. This is empty. Right. And then the hot water is all around. And this is called a double boiler setup. People also use it for melting chocolate. Anything where you want to introduce heat but not moisture, this is one way to do it. Yeah. So I'll let you do the honors. Do you okay. want to trade places? Sure. And now, so I just want, so this is a quarter cup? We're going to do, mainly just so we're doing a very small batch, we're going to uh -huh. use a quarter cup as our measurement each time. Okay. And we have some paper towel in case we spill, but it's olive oil, so it's easy to clean up. Okay, so here's a quarter cup of this beautiful calendula oil. Do I put it in the measuring cup? Yep, and then you can put it right in the inside our double boiler. Okay, there's the first thing. And then we want, so that's the oils. And then you're gonna wanna get about a quarter cup of the fats. Okay. And use any combination. Another Ooh, commonly I, uh, easily. Let's see, so is the beeswax a fat? No, it's a wax. It's huh? a wax. So another easily attainable fat that's good to use in these is coconut oil. The shea butter and the cocoa butter is a little more solid. So it, especially if you live somewhere really hot or you might have your lotion bar in the car or something, definitely go with something that it stays a little warmer. Okay. And you can put some cocoa butter in there too. I like to use both. Okay. So I'm using a little bit of the shea and some of the cocoa. Uh, can I break it? Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, am I? <laughs> My hands are completely oily. <laughs> I, it's just oh, squirting away like, from me. Can you actually break yes. it? Yes. You're welcome to break it, whether you <laughs> can you or can. not. I'm not sure. Hmm. I don't have a way to get this in half. <laughs> um, okay, pretty soon I'm going to break this. <laughs> right now I'm gouging it with my fingernails. Okay, we didn't bring a knife. We but <laughs> could you use the handle on the... Maybe I can use this little thing. Hold yeah. On. Ah, there, there we you go. go. Okay, and Split I'm just kind of estimating because it's, a, but I think that's about, if I look at how much is in there yeah, and how much is displaced, so that's probably pretty close to a quarter. Cup. And this is another thing that I'll show you how to test your consistency before you pour the mold. So if you wanted to test your consistency. Oh, to make sure it's going to be the right firmness? Right. Okay. I'll, I'll, uh -huh. I'll teach you how to do that. Okay, too. good. All right. And now a uh, wax. The wax, which is in the yellow container. Okay. And um, my hands are completely slimy. Oh, let me at this know. Point. Let me know if you need me to. We're gonna need some cleanup when we're done. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna leave here moisturized. Just There's rub no it doubt in. about this. Sometimes yes. I make this as a project when my skin is just super dry. Oh yeah. Okay, and I think we've just about used all of your wonderful smelling beeswax. It smells amazing. Yeah, the beeswax smells really nice. Could you put in little pebbles of beeswax like on the top or it, like as a little garnish or something? Sure, you can do it's whatever just so, you want. Look at how beautiful those little pebbles of beeswax are. And uh, you can buy whole beeswax or chunks, kind of like the shea butter and uh -huh. stuff. Um, and I like to buy these little beads because they melt really quick. They melt faster uh -huh. into 
the container. Okay, so that's kind of nice. And if yeah. do you want to scrape it out with this stir stick. Uh, and I then I did pretty good. Do you need that? Um, you know what? I usually, part of the reason I scrape it out is so I don't have to clean it later. Oh yeah, absolutely. Just <laughs> to keep it more simplistically clean. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then you're not wasting any materials, although this isn't much left. So and I'm just we'll gathering our little supplies here if people want to try and kind of remember what we put in. They're all back there. Yeah. Okay. So, and mm. the beeswax takes a while to melt, so you got to be kind of patient. It, I always think it's going to be faster than it is, even though I've made these quite a few <laughs> times. And then, um, can we talk a little bit about how you decide what you're going to put in? to the, like what the other like scents or little inclusions or whatever that you're gonna, like how do you decide what you wanna put in there besides the base? Well, one of the things I will put in on occasion, which I brought with me so we could do that, is dried flowers. Ooh. And that's more for decoration, although it's kinda nice as you use it, it's a little abrasive, so that's kinda nice. Uh-huh. And I, we won't add the scent until the very end because we don't want to lose the scent while we're heating it. Okay. So but that'll be one of our very last steps. And then what we could do while we're waiting on this to melt. I'm is, looking at the flowers that you brought. They're beautiful. Yeah. So I brought some dried rosebuds. And again, you want if you're using dried flowers, you want to make sure that they're very, very, very dry. You don't want them to be the thing that starts decaying oh, in your yeah. mix. Yeah. And I'm going to pour these into the, so you can see they're beautiful, delicate little pink and green rosebuds. Those are lovely. Look at that. And you can buy those. Of course, you could also grow them. Oh, yeah. So are these like a little Cecil Bruners or something, some little, some small rows? I've they must be, because that's uh -huh. what I have at home. <laughs> yeah. And then this looks In like dandelion? That's calendula. Oh, calendula. Again, I should I forgot who I was talking to. Of course it's right. calendula. And calendula are great in the garden. They're super duper easy to grow. They're really reliable. They're pretty drought tolerant. And they'll flower for many, many, many months at a time. <laughs> okay, calendula council, listen to this. Okay. And then, of course, lavender. Yeah. So I'm and just trying to put these out on the, on the desktop so you can just kind of see what Jody brought us. They're just beautiful. So we and have I the think lavender. Lavender is uh -huh. a nice floral scent that I think is, is calming. And it's kind of, I think, nice for both men and women. Oh, uh-huh. So it, even yeah. more masculine people, if they wear lavender, it smells pretty good. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. And, and then it's at calming. The end, we might put a little bit of lavender oil in too, just to boost the scent, huh? Okay, well, I'm excited about this. Okay. And we're melting along pretty nice. And we're melting. There. Good. Very nice. Um, Jody brought me a soap that she made, or not a soap, a lotion that she made this weekend, and I've had it in the car. And it's making the car just smell that teeny bit of like yummy, sort of herbal, a little bit sweet, honey sort of scent. So it's really nice. and. Um, because I've been using it in the car, it's making the car smell good too. Yeah. And Usually my car smells like, you know, half eaten pizza. <laughs> <laughs> in those I put a calming blend of essential oils. That included chamomile and lavender. Nice. And Very I usually nice. don't put a ton of scent. People can be sensitive to scents. Mm -hmm. So usually I go with a pretty light yeah. hand on the scents. So it's a little more broadly appealing. Yeah. In the interest of making this um, hurry along a little bit, should we turn the burner back on? Or do you, is it doing what you expect it to do? Yeah. And in the interest of full disclosure, I'm a little afraid of these burners. They're very hot. And they yes. come on like an explosion. Do you want me to do it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to stand out of the way. <laughs> okay, here we go. I am not afraid. It's going to go boom. Oh. There it goes. It does <laughs> blow the hair off your knuckles when you do it, just saying. And may, so maybe that's yeah. why I should have done it. <laughs> there we go. Okay. My stove at home is temperamental, so I, uh, and I also have a reputation at home mm -hmm. of never, uh, uh, paying attention to how many seconds I put the microwave on for. I just push the button until it beeps. And so I'm the one who always blows up the chili in the microwave. Oh, geez. Like always. My kids know as soon as they hear the microwave going, they come in to watch the show. They're like, oh, what mom blow up this time? Which actually, speaking of microwaves, I don't own a microwave. So I have not tested this, but it made me wonder if you could make the, this in the microwave. 
I'm would, sure you could read up on it and research it and make yeah. sure. Oh, and yeah. you know, because you're really just melting things. If you do that, I would recommend putting paper towel or something under it. I don't. It wouldn't and boil over. over. It. For those of us who explode things in the microwave all the time, like pinto beans will explode and just paper everything with fiber. Um, so you definitely want to research it first and maybe cover the top of the container as well. That was one of, part of a story of one of my worst <laughs> babysitting experiences ever. <laughs> and actually. The beef stew blowing up in the microwave was the best part of the horrible story. <laughs> I had a great time in the end, but yeah, there was um, a lot of undesirable body fluids. <laughs> Let's just say that. Were you a teenager at the time? I, w I was 14, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. One thing about being a parent is you get used to um, the kids, like the spit up and everything that come out of a baby is you just handle it and deal with it. It's not even gross anymore. You just get in there and deal. Well, I'm caring for yeah. any animal. That's yeah, definitely that's part of it. Even the true. human animal. Yep. Definitely. Oh, yeah. That's melting up quite nicely. Yeah. You can see how they're getting soft and kind of blobby. It right. looks really cool. The, um, the beeswax is suspended in the oil mixture, and so you can kind of see it all floating at different levels. And it's you'll really know pretty. it's ready, and you'll know it's all melted because the texture will be super consistent throughout the. It'll all be liquefied. Uh -huh. Oh, I meant to ask: Have you ever heard of anyone using um, animal products like butter or ghee? Um, you know, I thought about butter, and I don't know about butter shelf life. Oh, because it does go rancid after a while. Right. So butter is refrigerated usually to keep it. Oh yeah. So if you take a look in the camera right there, you can see we've got all these beautiful little pebbles of beeswax suspended in the hot oil and they're starting to kind of melt up a little bit too. And the animal fat also doesn't smell quite as good. Oh right, especially once it starts as to As all yes. of these plant-based fats. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, okay, and, and my students told me some jokes for everybody. Oh right, okay, let's have some jokes. Okay, so what did the buffalo mother Okay. Say to her child as he got ready to go to school. A buffalo mom sending her child off to school. What does she say? I don't know. What? Bye, son. Uh, bye, son. <laughs> I get it. Okay. okay. Ching -ching. That's a another, funny one. I like the animal puns. Okay. Here's another one. I think this is a well known joke. Okay. Because I told it in class today and somebody knew the punchline. Oh, yeah. So probably some of you will know this punchline. Just yell it out. Yell it out or tell us in the in the chat. Uh -huh. So why does Waldo wear stripes? Oh, do you guys know the Where's Waldo cartoons? The little guy that's always hiding in the big pictures. So hopefully you guys know about Where's Waldo. Why does Waldo wear stripes? I don't know why. So he won't be spotted. Huh? Got it. Yep. Pretty oh, good. Yeah. Now I'm thinking of Waldo in a polka dotted shirt because he's spotted. Me too. Yep. Okay, we're getting really close. Huh? We're getting really, really close. Oh, great. And then before we add the, oil, the essential oil, I always take it off the heat first. We don't want to boil off any of the scent. Uh huh. And we're getting really close. So, one of the dangerous things is taking your Pyrex container or whatever you're double boiling in taking it out. And notice now these melted really fast. Oh, at the very end, they went very quickly. So we, we had a bunch of beads a little bit ago, and now they're quickly oh, yeah. going away. I'm going to throw so in this last one. So that happens there pretty quick. And then do we put the flowers into a mixture, or do we put the flowers in the mold? I put the flowers in the mold. OK. And you know what? We should, we should put the flowers in the mold once we start pouring, because we have such a tiny batch. Okay. And let me give you some pouring tips. Just a few at a time. You okay. don't want to make the, I mean, you could certainly make them thinner than the full mold, but if they're too thin, it, they break in half pretty quickly, mm. your lotion bar as you use it. So you don't want to make them too thin. Okay. And we'll just start pouring and see how many we have. Do you want to add oils to yours? Or I should ask the crew because you guys will probably end up with them. Okay, camera, raise your hand. Do you want a little bit of scent in yours? Raise your hand if you oh, want yeah, some lavender. Oh, yeah, we got three cameras. We got four hands up. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. All right. According so to the crew. Are you going to do the pouring and everything? I would love to if I can, yeah. Okay. I want to so learn everything. Put one of those on so you don't burn yourself. Okay. Wear my safety mitt. And then you're going to grab it out and start pouring. Okay. 
Was I gonna put flowers in first? Um, you know what, we can put the flowers in once it's in the mold. Okay, got it. All right, so we're gonna go, gonna get this towel out of the way. Go where you can see me. And let's add some oils. And we're gonna go kind of light, just so people, it's not o it overpowering. Okay, and what about three drops? Um, a little go. more than that. Uh, okay. Give it a give gentle it a swirl. And then, um, do you have a guess? Should I just do four of these little guys in Yeah, the you could do four of the little guys, and okay. you could make them kind of stout. Okay, we'll make them kind of tall. I'm excited to put some flowers in, too. And sometimes I use rose oil as the scent. Oh, and then you put roses in. Right, so it's an indicator to the person what ah, the smell I is. Okay, doing we're good, Miss Baker. Guys in the middle. Oh, and you know, you can see where it cooled on the edge of the cup. Look. Yep. So the edge of the cup has hardened lotion on it. So I was going to give you, if you're experimenting with ingredients, I was going to give you a tip as to how you know. You can pour a little bit of the oil onto a spoon or a spatula or something like that and put it in the fridge and let it set up really quickly mm -hmm. and then touch it and feel it and see if it's a consistency that you like. Ah, uh, so this one Before is just doing it at room temperature. You can see this one's going right here. Yeah. So and if a you're, tester bit. if you really like certain colors and stuff like that, for example, cocoa butter lends a little bit darker of a color. So mm -hmm. if you really want a beautiful light ivory color, then you should go with like shea Can butter and coconut and oil. Yep. Oh, and yeah. you should, before that hardens in uh -huh. the Pyrex, you should go ahead and pour it in the mold. Oh, I was like, going to put lavender and then pour? Can uh, I go but fast But you don't enough? want it to, you don't want it to start to solidify. We can always reheat it. It's okay. no big deal, but. I just wanted to make sure I bury my little lavender bits. Oh, right. So you're going so to pour some on top. Yes. Gotcha. That Good was strategy. my thinking. Oh, look at them. They're already saturated. Ooh, and then the drips mixes it all in, kind of. <gasps> this is really fun. And this is like a super easy, it's a good rainy day project. If your skin feels dry, it's oh, a good yeah. thing to do. And keep in mind that like a career that people go into with a chemistry background is formulating things that we use every day. Lotion, shampoos, makeup, uh, chapsticks, stuff like that. And you can totally see this made a beautiful pattern where it comes out. So you can even see it's not hot anymore. But you can see how it solidified and you can totally see the texture of what it's going to be. So we're not going to be able to take one of the hearts out. I don't think they're not going to solidify yeah. in time. But we can show you uh, on Thursday when we're back. And we'll just leave them here to set up. Yeah, so you can see. And in the meantime, there's this beautiful little bit of lotion. So these little guys, you can see, it's like they're still like jiggly. It's just the four in the middle. Yeah, and it doesn't take too mm -hmm. long to set up. Yeah. And now can I just try this as a lotion on my yes. skin? My hands have been dry all try day. Try it up. So and we, let have our little, we have our little sampler bit right here. So I'm just gonna like put my lotion on. Thank you for there watching. This is the last week of Homework Hotline for the season. Yes, and we'll be back on Thursday to talk about eggs and ways to make your eggs into a very entertaining art project snack. So thank you very much for being with us. It smells amazing in here. <laughs> hmm.